Now let's move to education. According to the Progress in International Reading Literacy Study, or PEARLS 2021 report, South Africa not only has one of the worst global reading for meaning scores in the world, but we're actually getting worse. The 2021 survey found that 81% of grade fours, that's 10 year olds essentially, cannot read for meaning in any language. South Africa has recorded its worst decline in reading skills compared to other countries since 2016 as well. At this rate, we will fall far short of President Cyril Ramaphosa's commitment that by 2030 all 10-year-olds in South Africa will be able to read for meaning. Well, I'm joined now by educational economist at Stellenbosch University, Professor Nick Spall. Prof, thank you so much for joining us. Really disheartening news. It's important with these studies to understand exactly how they're done, uh, how children are assessed, are they assessed in the language they're most comfortable, have they been given every opportunity to show their skills? Thanks, Sally. <clears throat> yeah, so the way that the study is done um, is we take a nationally representative uh, sample of primary schools, about 320 primary schools, and about 12,000 grade four students are assessed uh, on a reading test. That's both fiction and nonfiction. Um, and they're tested in the language of the school. So in other words, if you are a Zulu child in KwaZulu-Natal, you would be tested in Isi Zulu. If you were an Afrikaans learner in an Afrikaans school in the Western Cape, you would be tested in Afrikaans and all 11 languages are assessed. Um, the stories are usually about 400 words and children are asked a variety of different questions. And what you refer to there as reading for meaning is whether or not the children can reach the lowest threshold of reading. So it's the most basic level of reading that you can find. Um, it's called the low international benchmark on pearls and they need to be able to locate and retrieve an explicitly stated detail in a story or an informational text. Um, and then these results are then aggregated to what you've just spoken about now. And all the countries around the world write the same test, but obviously at the same time, but just in their languages, the national languages of their country. So not, have we, not only have we slipped in the rankings of the 50 uh, countries that took part, but we've slipped compared to ourselves. So I wonder, I, I know that we've taken part in polls in 2006, 2011, 2016, and now in 2021. Just explain how our reading ability is actually going backwards. Yeah, so I think the graph that you can see on your screen there uh, was just showing that the percentage of children that couldn't read at a basic level, in other words, they were basically illiterate, was going down before the pandemic from 2006 to 2011 to 2016. But then the pandemic hit, we had school closures uh, in 2020 and we had rotational timetables in 2021. So children lost about 50% of instructional time uh, in 2020 and about 25% of instructional time in 2021. Uh, which meant that there was going to be learning losses. Uh, and that's why you see that there's a rise in the percentage of children that can't read at the basic level to 81%. Another way of kind of illustrating that is the change in scores from 2016 to 2021 in South Africa is the equivalent of losing about 80% of a year of learning. So when you look at the drop in Pearl scores, um, it amounts to about 30 points and 40 points is equal to a year of learning. So the average grade four child in 2021 is about 80% of a year behind the average grade four child from 2016. And that's why you're right in saying we're going backwards. Can we just simply blame COVID for all of this? I think that the main explanation is COVID and it is the um, school closures and rotational timetables that we have. But we do have to ask why we have the largest decline of all of the participating countries that had trained data from 2016 to 2021. So there were 33 countries that tested at both of those time periods and we have the largest decline um, across all the countries. Now, most of these countries are high income countries, but you do also have countries like Brazil, Jordan, Egypt, um, and we have larger declines than, than other developing countries as well. So I think part the, the pandemic is the, the leading explanation for why we have this decline. But I think it is also important to emphasize that we didn't really do much to try and catch up the learning losses that were uh, very evident from COVID. There wasn't a national plan. There wasn't a budget that was rolled out to catch up the learning losses. Uh, the biggest government initiative was the Presidential Youth Employment um, Scheme, the PYER. Um, and that was primarily an employment initiative to hire unemployed matrix for five to eight months 
uh, on a rotating basis. So as soon as they finished, they would leave. Um, and those were more like school assistants rather than sort of skilled professionals that could catch up learning time. And at the moment, the only province that's done anything about this is the Western Cape, who announced a big back on track program on Thursday. And they're spending 1.2 billion rand over the next three years just for one province. Now, we don't have anything like that for the country as a whole. Um, and I think that's also the leading explanation for why these losses are so high. Mm. So if we look at, um, you know, these are 10-year-olds, by the time they get to matric, sort of 17, 18, we are seeing that our matric pass rate is increasing. It even held its own during the COVID years. So that leads me to, to either one of two conclusions, and you'll tell me if there's, a, there's another option. Are our standards for matric slipping? Or do these 10-year-olds who don't read for meaning, do they eventually catch up? Uh, and and the, the result we got in 2021 is a blip from COVID and they'll probably go through the system and catch up. Sure. So two, two tough questions. Let me start with the second one. Um, whether or not they catch up, the answer is no. We, uh, we don't think that in the absence of remediation and the absence of getting additional time, going to a business as usual approach is not going to lead to catch up. If you're a year behind the curriculum, if you're a year behind where the, the people were uh, before the pandemic in 2016, you won't just automatically catch that up without additional effort. You need Saturday classes, you need holiday camps, you need additional tutoring, you need not business as usual to catch up those learning losses. So if we don't do anything, these children will just continue with those same learning losses and reach the milestones one year later. Um, and we should see those in matric. Now, your more difficult question about uh, the matric exam, this is quite a difficult one to explain, but basically um, the way that the matric exam works is it assumes when they're standardizing the marks, it assumes that the underlying distribution of every year is the same. So if you write a, a maths exam and the marks are terrible, they assume that the reason why the marks are terrible was because the test was harder and then they shift the distribution, what we call o-jiving. They just shift the distribution to the right to make it match the five-year rolling average. Now, that's a huge problem when you have something like a pandemic, right? Because the, the year before the pandemic and the year during the pandemic, those are not the same cohorts. So if this cohort does much worse, you can't just shift the test. Um, it, the reason why they're doing worse is most plausibly because they're doing worse. It's not because of the test. So I do think there's some questions that Umalusi needs to answer about how the metric uh, process is happening. And we've, we've mentioned that in the media as well. You've spoken about catch-up programs and you said that the Western Cape is leading the way and we have to correct this. Otherwise, when these kids get to matric, they're going to come short. We've also seen yesterday uh, that first quarter results, unemployment has increased. We've now got 8 million South Africans out of work and that's by the contracted definition, uh, not counting the people who've basically given up. These reading results, you know, they weren't fabulous even before COVID came along, but we were getting marginal mm. improvements. What is it suggesting about the foundation that we are building or not building for these youngsters to actually eventually one day become skilled workers? Yeah. So, Sally, I think linking it with the labour market, uh, as you've done there, is a really important um, way of explaining why getting reading right is so important. And I'm going to mention one finding from Pearls and come back to your labour market question. When we looked at uh, the languages of which uh, home languages or the language of schools uh, did better and which did worse, English and Afrikaans lulled schools, what the language of learning and teaching, they actually stayed exactly the same. Between 2016 and 2021, there's no difference in the scores of English and Afrikaans language schools. It was only African language schools that dropped, which are no fee schools. So we're basically seeing an increase in inequality. And the reason why I bring that up is we know that the economy that we have is basically a two-speed economy. Uh, you know, you have uh, this formal sector with a very small amount of formal jobs, um, and you have a very large group of people that are in the second tier economy that don't have skills. There are no additional jobs for them. And that's where you get that extremely high unemployment rate that you mentioned. Now, the problem is that our schooling system is similarly divided into fee charging and no fee schools. So if you're part of that fee charging system, you end up in the functional part of the economy. Uh, you often end up with private health care, um, private schooling or fee charging public schooling. And the way that you equalize and kind of get those two things to, to merge is through the schooling system. And it's starting at the foundation phase and getting reading right. So what we're seeing here is that if you're in a fee charging school, you, you have a 70 to 80 percent chance that you'll learn to read. But if you're in a no fee school, you have a 10 to 15 percent chance that you're going to read. 
So really, if we want to tackle that unemployment problem that you've just spoken about from the QLFS results, we can trace that all the way back to grade one, two, and three, and whether or not children learn the letters of the alphabet in grade one, learn how to read with fluency uh, in grade two, and with comprehension by grade three and grade four. Yeah, so the system is geared against them almost from the start. It has to be addressed important findings. Thank you so much for breaking it down so comprehensively, education economist at Stellenbosch University, Professor Nick Spall. Now